Hello and welcome to Beacon Space and our next... Oh, it is definitely not a faction turn stream. Please hold for the cold open while we fix the logo. Uh, that's over here. This is what you get for thinking you've checked everything and not actually having done so. Lower stream 29. Okay, there we go. Uh, with that, uh, welcome on in, everyone, and let's see what all we have today. Welcome to BBTV Tonight, and I am your host, Xavier Stordes. I am your co-host, Lupus Calbrecht. Our top stories tonight. Concord Cookie Craze sweeps Beacon Space as our own Lupus Calbrecht was tricked into being the face of an advertising campaign for a new expanding franchise. I'm streaming into the studio from an undisclosed location, and I'm not allowed to say why. There's no place like Gome. Ironic tagline or genuine statement? Project Anazidi's successor seeks to provide evidence for the latter. Our TTGI station offices have been reporting a heavy uptick in TTGI activity, including a meeting between three prominent management representatives to discuss and simulate potential terraforming opportunities. Do you live on an iron-rich space rock? They may be coming for your home. Yes, although TTGI's power has been put to question by the formation of the TELUS Council, legal questions and physical realities still remain, including, what about the beacon? Watch stations across the sector, especially in the core, have been reporting an exponential increase in energy output from the beacon. While the current levels are still low, the BBTV science team predicts that they will reach a peak in a few days. Travel advisory remains in effect for everyone in the core worlds. St stay safe out there and keep your sensors open for any unusual uh, effects. And finally, Traegrin makes an error, coming to you live with their usual substandard and spurious reporting, their regular report, on behalf of Chaz Gusto Prime. You're just upset about the BBTV apartment allocations. Excuse me, can we get some independent fact-checking on that? Anyway. We'll be right back after this message from our sponsors. Silent Night Cargo Concerns. We invite travelers to the sector of the brilliant world of Telus. Be it for business or pleasure, Silent Night provides swift and secure transit for visitors of the center system. Cutting through the red tape, our dedicated teams will make sure your passes and permits are squared away so that you don't have to mess with the hassle of bureaucracy in your travel plans. Our services go beyond simply for your person. As our name implies, we handle a wide range of cargo concerns. Be it a porter service that can get your holiday bags straight to your hotel room to providing storage facilities, or even negotiating bulk goods through local customs. We've got you covered. Through our affiliates in Falufo Kaliki, we offer half-hourly shuttle services from the bountiful TTGI station to the planet's many floating cities. Safe and reliable service is vital to the health of our clients, and that is why the security travelers and their cargo is our top priority in the void space of the center system. Call now to ask about our Guardian Protection Package. Welcome back, and uh, thank you to the Silent Night Cargo Concerns for their continued sponsorship of BBTV. Given the increase in uh, energy sensing output from the beacon, perhaps an additional round of security is in your future for your transit needs to tell us. Not to mention the increased complicated paperwork with the transition from the Children of the Vein being the uh, planetary governors of TELUS and it now being the TELUS Council and having multiple different factions involved in the uh, paperwork process. Honestly, it's a red tape nightmare. Every time when I go to TELUS, I need like seven different visas. Yes, it is uh, quite an interesting uh, confluence of events. Now, you were saying something about um, the apartment allocations, Calbrecht. Um, where could we get them independently fact-checked? Well, see, when they were assigning the new apartments for the BBTV offices on TTGI Station, they went by seniority, but they didn't take into account 
my several years in prison. So technically, I should have been able to bid a lot higher than Chaz, but he still got the outward facing window and I'm on the inner ring. Mm. Well, uh, perhaps you could use one of the spare bedrooms in my uh, outer satellite uh, several story apartment home. Not all of us have dirt on the owners, Xavier. Uh, well, perhaps that's some other independent fact-checking to acquire. Uh, with that, though, perhaps we should turn to uh, Chaz's uh, report coming at us from Trey Grin and the Children of the Vein. This report has been made possible by the New Eden Gene Bank. Be a better you. Visit your local branch for a consultation. Hello, Beacon Space. This is Trey Grin here, feeling much better and here to provide you with the latest from Round Sector. Filling in for Chaz, who is currently handling a hostage negotiation situation. In the news of this cycle, crime, kidnapping, terror, and theft. For our first story, our very own BBTV anchor, L. Kalbrick, has been kidnapped. Thankfully, the criminals are fans of Cal, and they've been gracious enough to allow him to broadcast from an undisclosed location, while Chaz Gusto Prime handles hostage negotiations on behalf of BBTV. It's only a Class 2 kidnapping, and he's in good hands with Chaz, who has reported that the kidnappers seem concerned as a night they accidentally kidnapped alongside Cal demands more gingerbread cake or else. Negotiations are going well, and we should see Cal back in his office soon with the BBTV Deluxe Welcome Back from the Kidnapping gift basket. I hear they come with a comfort jellyfish plushie now that they can make soothing soup with. Next up, the BBTV Traffic Report has a breaking story announcing significant space lane delays due to terrorist activity near Gate D. The terrorists have been identified as members of the Umbral Throne of the Free Dominion, and they seem to have ambushed Starlet Court Knights returning from Dine. During the subsequent battle, Gate D faced emergency closures due to safety concerns as transit authorities redirect traffic to alternative gates. We reached out to the Umbral Throne with a request for comment, and Sir Iago of the Shadowblade, Supreme Commander of the Umbral Throne, had this to say. The attack against the alleged Starlet Court was a matter of retaliation for the decades of oppression against the alleged Free Dominion, our people, their people, exiled for suing the noble quest that has defined the people of Sea here for centuries. The Umbral Throne are committed to the protection and well-being of these oppressed peoples. And soon, all of Beacon Space will enjoy our protection. <laughs> no other questions. In related news, night recruitment numbers are up due to a recent road rage recruitment drive stemming from local traffic jams. For our final story, Administrator Cardinal Blanche has reported a theft from their personal office. The item in question was a plant fossil of no particular scientific value or rarity that was being used as a paperweight. However, many other far more valuable fossils on display in Blanche's office were left in place, a detail that has investigators stumped. Going through all that trouble to seal paperweight seems bizarre in my honest opinion. Security officials have dubbed this thief the Paperweight Wraith, and have placed a bounty for information that leads to their capture. That concludes our sector report for this cycle. Even the minor crimes seem to be eventful on Telos. Tune in next time as we continue to steal your hearts. This has been Trey Grin, flipping out. Has Trey Grin managed to steal your heart yet, Calbrecht? Uh, more at 11. Uh, Trey Grin has not, although Chaz has grown on me like a particularly pervasive mold. Uh, well, uh, good to know, given he is uh, apparently helping to negotiate your release from your undisclosed location. Yes, I perhaps shouldn't insult those who 
know how to get me released. However, I would ask the independent fact-checkers, how does he know where I was kidnapped in the first place? More to follow. We'll have to find out in the near future. With that, my friend, uh, do you have any other news to bring us from uh, across the sector this week? Well, what has become a comedically open secret, we have a direct line into the Aguamala Syndicate's internal memorandum network. To wit, we have had released a memo about projects of the future, which gives us a startling insight into the future of the Aguamala Syndicate and their continuing projects around the sector. It reads, Two members of the affiliated patrons of the Aguamala Syndicate and BBT viewers, thanks to Xavier Stordits and Elk Alworks. In light of recent successes following the introduction of Project Anaziti, the expert organizations of the Aguamala Syndicate have been hard at work to create proposals for additional projects, with the goal of both strengthening ties to worlds participating in it and utilizing the mutual resources and other boons present on them. As a result of this endeavor, we're pleased to announce a first look at the details of Project Mixcoatl's Forge. Investigation by Aguamalan analysts have determined that the orbital construction facilities located over Gome, while previously sufficient for projects identified by local planetary representatives, are promising candidates for upgrade in order to allow for greater diversity and scale of production. Mixcoatl's Forge is the first phase of this upgrade process, a major shipyard, scale not yet matched by any other on or surrounding Gome. The planet's resource distribution and plentitude of buildable space provides a promising locale for the endeavor, expanding operations to a scale that would not be possible within Nueva Cuetmoc's space constraints. Named for Mixcoatl, the deity of the Hunt and the Milky Way galaxy, revered by the long-past ancestors of Agumal's founders, it is hoped that Mixcoatl's forge will prove that with a little bit of supernatural luck, our hunts will succeed and space will be ours, as long as El Destino smiles on our work. For additional details on upcoming Agumalan projects, please reach out to your local syndicate representative. I wonder who our local syndicate representative is. Maybe we should just ask them. Yes, I, I believe that would be the representative to either the Telas Council or the uh, struggling TTGI Council. Um, maybe they have doubled up and it's the same person. I wouldn't know. I believe most uh, factions have, in fact, rolled their Telas uh, Terror Group representative over to the Telas Council as appropriate, given the jurisdictional debates that were currently going on between the two entities. It seems likely that within the next several months, the TELUS Council will subsume most of the responsibilities of the terraforming group, um, rendering the former perhaps more embedded with the latter. Indeed. Aguamala Syndicate uh, continues to expand and conduct their building works around Gome. There is no place like Gome, and remember, be a better you. Absolutely. Uh, if you're looking to travel through um, Agumalan space, perhaps the Agumalan Travel Agency is also for you. Indeed. Uh, with that, though, we'd like to thank our factions for their lore contributions for this month and um, the wonderful stories we'll continue to tell. We'll look forward to the continuing broadcast next month. Perhaps we'll get to hear more about the um, excavations going into uh, the recently renamed Planet C or Planet De Designate CU, as well as um, several other entities that may be um, of interest for the larger sector. Indeed, it's been somewhat of a quiet month on the BBTV Tonight broadcast. However, this happens, and we thank you to the factions that have submitted uh, their items for this broadcast. And we look forward to the next one, where we understand it takes time and effort to make these things, and uh, it's 
slightly easier for us to sit here and read them. So we do appreciate all of the submissions that we get. Thank you very much. And uh, next month, we'll even get to look forward to the return of a People of Beacon Space segment. The uh, every two month or so, when Xavier remembers to schedule it, uh, installment of uh, our interviews with in interesting people across the sector. I believe uh, next month we'll actually get a representative uh, from the Children of the Vein who will be our interviewee. Uh, we're looking, getting, getting ready to schedule that in the next coming weeks. Creepy flesh rights are our most prominent sponsor. We'll never tell. Uh, well, we'll be hopefully getting to interview one of the members as part of one of their um, uh, bio shells uh, integrated individuals. I'm totally forgetting the fictional name for them. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll remember in time for the next one. I'm sure we will, because I'll have better notes in front of me. <laughs> uh, with that, though, um, I'm not sure we have any specific wiki article to point out this month as part of our uh, semi-regular wiki review, but I do know there's been lots of new um, lore added and updates performed on the wiki. Um, there's been a few additions from myself, I think, since the last time we did this, with um, adding in some more details about the Telus terraforming group as a whole, as well as uh, giving a base page for some space truckers, which is work I had been doing uh, in the background. So that's now on the wiki for people to, to peruse at and provide feedback to. Um, Several factions have continued to expand upon the law niche segment of the wiki, which while not uh, particularly prominent items such as uh, cuisine, media, uh, cultural events, sports, um, while they are not uh, the most flashy segments of the wiki, they do make the world feel expansive and lived in. So thank you to everybody who's contributed to that section. Um, I know that the uh, Larkspur Syndicate have submitted their floating city, the Helionic, which is a good read if you want to go and look at that. And I know that they have far more lore. They've been doing many lore jams and we uh, anxiously await it to hit the wiki. Absolutely. Uh, that sounds about it for a wiki review for this month, which I believe leads us into your own investigative reporting into the free agents. Indeed, the murky world of the Penumbra is a source of many stories to our news broadcast. And speaking of those series, um, Let's remind you about what Free Agents is. So Free Agents is a West Marches style tabletop game set in our own Beacon Space universe, working in between the uh, levels of uh, the factions and individuals who are just about able to get things done. Any member of the community is uh, welcome to join in, make a character or uh, several, as sometimes is the case as characters advance, and then play in these various sessions. It's drop in, drop out. You can play as much or as little as you are available. And as uh, my co-host has said, anyone is welcome. Uh, recently, the Free Agents game has wrapped up several of its story arcs, with the major one focusing around a fringe world called Planet Z, which you will be hearing more about in the Faction Turn broadcast to follow. Including some Faction Turn level mechanics that will be announced at the end of the regular stream this turn. Indeed, and watch out for the next law stream wherein the law explanation for those mechanics will be provided as is the precedent for, uh, for our broadcast here. And as is typically the case when we do wrap up the uh, major story arcs, Free Agents is going to be revised and releasing into a new season. This will be our fourth and is going to feature some structural changes to the game. The Penumbra network itself has received some updates, including a new message board forum channel so that everyone can aim to keep up to date with the recurring themes and characters across the game, as well as having a new collated rules document to make looking up the various custom species and classes that were added into the game generic setting system of Cypher easier to do. Hopefully this will also encourage individuals to uh, 
to be able to keep track of our long-running arcs without needing to be attending every single session, as that is uh, understandably a large ask for West Marcher's style gameplay. Indeed, while it is primarily a series, long series of one-shots, there are obviously uh, themes and characters that reoccur as people return to the same locations or do jobs for the same clients. So uh, a place to keep track of all the information, uh, especially now as we enter our, well, coming up on our third year of free agents. Um, it's uh, for new players making it a bit easier. Well, Free Agent Season 4 is introducing some new home rules, some new enemies, and some new players. We've now had over 30 unique players who have participated in over 200 game sessions. And I want to say thank you to everyone who's participated and makes GMing and playing in the game possible and a lot of fun. So thank you to everybody who has participated. And uh, with a Perhaps, um, since I know there's been some centralization work on summarizing the still open threads, it'd be worth uh, sharing the secrets of a few of those more broadly. Hmm, perhaps. Uh, perhaps the um, biggest one I'll take on first, because it doesn't yet have a, uh, a post in this new updated channel, given my current availability, uh, but uh, there's been a theming running uh, called Poaching Ivory on, in fact, Telus Station itself, where the agents have been helping to influence a somewhat historical event in the faction turn, given um, during the time of the actual terraforming there was an event where factions were asked to back a side between the negotiations over two individuals who were aiming to uh, retain a rentership over some space on the Telus station. This uh, has finally devolved into an active fight with uh, have, there having to be several votes on the issue within the uh, aforementioned Telus, um, whether or not it's the Telus Council or the TTGI Council is an open question given the timeline shenaniganry that occurs in, uh, in Free Agents, uh, but there's been lots of investigations to find out more about the two different individuals who are trying to rent this space, as well as uh, an interesting interplay between the handlers within the Penumbra network. Absolutely. Um, several of our characters are now approaching at the end of their natural lives, and seeing them progress towards uh, how are they going to bow out of the game is interesting questions as they have progressed all the way from tier 1 to the top of the cipher system, tier 6, and uh, are now significant characters in their own right. So it's interesting um, doing some character specific sessions for those people who have been playing for a long time and have moved on to second or even third characters. Absolutely, and I believe um, us here at BBTV have started to see some inklings of research indicating some spheres that have been identified. Uh, our scientists are still confused as to their very nature, however. Indeed, initially reported uh, by the Grand University on Icaros, there have been a number of strange metallic spheres popping up around beacon space, numerically ordered and containing distinct personalities. Uh, they have been cropping up and we don't exactly know what's going on with them yet, but the, every time the agents have run into them, it's been uh, some dire circumstance. So we'll continue to see where that goes. Absolutely. Any other um, story rumors you'd like to share on air today? Well, as we are entering into a new season, that means we are more than likely going to see, yet again, the Glittering Dozen, everyone's favorite incompetent thieves come mineral miners, uh, probably going to be stuck somewhere new. Every time we meet this crew, they are stuck in a sticky situation. The last time, their leader was stuck in an engagement to a bird person. So we'll see what sticky situation they're in next time. Or perhaps not, st not so sticky as it may be a very slippery one. Indeed. Any other news to share for today's uh, station uh, broadcasts? That's it from me, Stolitz. Well, I think that's uh, it for myself then. 
Um, and uh, in an effort not to push up the faction turn by a half hour without appropriate notice, we're going to fill the next half hour with um, some other uh, lore gem uh, like content as I'm going to uh, walk through burning out some more of the important NPCs that have been uh, created for uh, Telus Station that haven't made their way onto the wiki uh, quite yet, but uh, rightfully could in their their own right, and uh, hopefully also give my co-host here some other important NPCs on Telus Station to uh, reference in Free Agents should the need arise. But before we do that, we are going to take a uh, short few minute break as I uh, reconfigure my stream setup to be able to, to handle that page. And uh, we'll see you back here in uh, just about two or three minutes. Thanks for, uh, for, to for joining us for the lore stream today. Any other final words, Calbrick? Thank you for tuning into the law stream and participating in unrestricted lawfare, as always. Cool. See you back here in just a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs>